Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, a free site, BettingAngle.us, a free site. It's President's Day here in the United States. It's February 19th, 2024. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, without commenting too much on the following fights, let me just say that you're reading a lot of boxing articles that are pubbing fights as being competitive. Right? The writer of the article might be a hardcore boxing fan, but might not be a gambler. And might want to help promoters sell the fight. Right? Might be excited by the uh, biographies of the fighters, the histories of the fighters. Uh, might not be completely in tune with weight classes, with age, with inactivity. Now, what I want people to do is to check out a website called oddschecker.com. Again, it's oddschecker.com. You're going to find a different point of view here. These are posted odds. This is really the way either the casino thinks the market sees the fight or it's market driven where enough gamblers have looked at the fight where they have actually impacted the odds. So some of the fights you thought would be highly competitive have wide spreads. And some of the fights where you thought it would be different have surprising spreads. Let's go through just a few of these before we talk about a fight currently missing from the page that many people question whether it's going to happen. Tyson Fury against Alexander Usyk. Let's take a step back. I'm just going to name some of the more tantalizing fights that are coming up. I'm not going to express an opinion on the spreads, but what I want viewers to do here, we'll talk about some of these fights in separate videos, but what I want viewers to do here is to think to themselves, is that how I see the fight? Right? Sometimes the crowd's wrong. But understand, gamblers see some of these fights as lopsided. When in public, in these articles, they're viewed as competitive, and the fighters themselves will sign a contract and then will be surprised by how lightly gamblers take them. Right? The fighter, ego, will think, well, clearly, I'm the betting side of the play here. Clearly, this is a much-awaited fight. People couldn't think my opponent has the edge on me when gamblers think just that. So, Tim Zhu versus Keith Thurman. Just picture what you think the odds are. Folks, right now on OddsChecker.com, they're telling you that Tim Zhu is going off at a minus 700. Right, on the Keith Thurman side of the play, because there's Vig involved, he's going off at a plus 600. Let's get back to the Tim Zhu side of the play. They're telling you that if these two guys fought eight times, Tim Zhu would win seven of the eight. How about this fight? It's taking place in Australia. George Cambosis against Vasyl Lomachenko. Close your eyes and think about the odds you believe that fight should go off at. Well, just to understand, Loma right now is a minus 500. Cambosis is a plus 475. On the Loma side of the play, they're telling you that if these guys fought six times, Loma would win five of the six. And that's against Cambosis in Australia. How about this fight? A guy who may or may not, depending on your point of view, especially regarding the last two rounds of that fight, may or may not have beaten Loma. Devin Haney 
against Ryan Garcia. Right, folks? Garcia is a huge name. Garcia is all over Instagram. Garcia, dare I say it, is on his way to being a box office king in the sport. The people who bet on fights don't think Ryan Garcia is all that as a boxer. Devin Haney is going off at a minus 500. Minus 500. Ryan Garcia, you're getting a plus 490. This is even more insulting than it looks because the spread between the minus 500 and the plus 490 isn't that great. There isn't a lot of vig built in here. So what the casino is telling you is that if these guys fought six times, they would expect Devin Haney to win five of the six. In other words, a lot of Ryan Garcia's support comes from people who aren't impacting the betting spread. Let's flip this around. And I'm surprised by some of these lines. You have an Olympic medalist, Fraser Clark. You go through his history, you're going to find out that Fraser Clark was in many amateur tournaments, is decorated, extensive amateur pedigree. Now, he's fighting a guy who came up in the professional ranks, right? This guy didn't fight a lot of amateur fights. Fabio Wardley, right, folks? The gamblers are on the Wardley side of the play. Again, this is right off oddschecker.com. Wardley's going off at a minus 200. Right, the casino's telling you that if they fought three times, Wardley would win two of the three. In other words, we're not buying the amateur pedigree of Fraser Clark. You're not going to see that in interviews, right? Interviewees are um, treated with kid gloves by interviewers. Right? No one's going to say, hey, do you think your amateur pedigree translates into professional success? Do you think you have the physical tools to deal with Fabio Wardley, who, behind the scenes, has sparred with many of the big names in boxing? Folks, gamblers are asking those questions. Let's flip the script here and talk about a fight that the public is split on. And this is a little surprising to me, personally. I'm not going to tell you which way I'm leaning. I haven't decided how I'm going to present this fight if it's signed. Understand, Odds Checker has hypothetical fights. One of them is Joshua Buatzi against Anthony Yard. Folks, right now, this fight on oddschecker.com is a jump ball. Believe it or not, they're not giving an edge. Anthony Yard is going off at even money, as is Joshua Buatzi. Now let's talk about Tyson Fury against Alexander Usyk. Let me point out that when this fight first debuted in the betting markets, it was clear clear as day that the favorite in the fight was Tyson Fury. There wasn't a lot of doubt. Right? You were getting plus 150 and higher on Usyk. A plus 150 would give Usyk a 40% chance of winning the fight. We viewed Tyson Fury as the heavyweight champ. Right? It's Fury who beat Vladimir Klitschko. It was Fury who's always been a heavyweight. Usyk, coming up from cruiserweight, wasn't even the favorite against Anthony Joshua. 
right? People questioned his size. People viewed him as a guy who got pressured in a fight, pushed in a fight by Derek Chisora, a guy who has been handled by Tyson Fury in more than one fight. Right, the last fight you were watching it and you thought, why isn't the referee stopping this fight? And you thought that for at least the last couple rounds of that fight, the Tyson Fury Derek Chisora fight. But something's happened. Right, maybe the boxing public is finally coming to grips with the idea that a guy in his first fight not only knocked down Tyson Fury. Now that's a shocker, but understand, a big punch can knock you down even when there's a skill gap. No, the shocker for me in that Francis Ngannou fight was the fact that Ngannou hangs in there for 10 rounds and lands more power shots. Folks, that's far more disturbing than the fact that he knocked down Tyson Fury. Well, understand what's happened since then. The line has tightened considerably. Right? The betting spread doesn't really depend on the wasted energy of interviews before a fight where some fighter is trying to convince you that he's alpha. Right? No, no. The betting spreads are based on people's assessment of which fighter is going to return a profit for them in the fight. Right, folks? The last time I saw this line, it was almost even money. In other words, the Tyson Fury side of the play has collapsed. Well, now it's even more interesting. It's February the 19th, 2024, if you go to oddschecker.com right now, you won't find the Tyson Fury Alexander Usyk fight. It's not listed, even though it's a heavyweight unification match. I couldn't be the only person interested this morning in seeing the odds on that fight. I believe in the background, there are doubts among gamblers right now on Tyson Fury, right? If you go to Boxing News 24, they have an article where they point out that contractually, if Fury's unable to fight on the May date, then Usyk is contractually obligated to fight Philippe Bergovic. Right now, for, folks, excuse me, let me just say two things here. Okay, I personally believe, and I've said this here online, that Tyson Fury is going to have problems with Alexander Usyk. Right, Usyk certainly was the betting side of the play when he was going off at underdog odds. Even at even money. I think Usyk warrants a look here. Right, Tyson Fury historically has had a problem with faster-handed, more coordinated cruiserweight types. Right? He has a problem with better athletes. He's at his best against big clunky heavyweights. But I believe he has a problem here with Alexander Usyk. So understand, the conspiracy theorists among us, some of the members of Usyk's entourage, believe that Tyson Fury's looking for a way out of the match. According to Boxing News 24, there's even a $10 million penalty if one of the fighters pulls out of the fight. 
Even the promoters have concerns. Right? You need to ask yourself the tough question of why. Right? Let me just say, I thought Tyson Fury was having a problem with, we'll name a heavyweight, not even a cruiserweight, Otto Wallen, before Fury decided to engage in roughhouse tactics. He had to use roughhouse tactics against Steve Cunningham. Right? Fury's in his mid-30s. Power is the last to go. Your legs and coordination go earlier. There are questions being asked about Fury's performance against Ngannou. Was that a situation where he didn't take the fight seriously? It was only a 10-round fight. Maybe he got knocked down. I know he has a poker face. Maybe he was more phased than he looked. Maybe the knockdown diminished him where he was slow for a few rounds. I myself believe Fury started to pull away in rounds 9 and 10. I believe the fight would have been clear cut had it been a 12 round fight, but it was only a 10 round fight. Right? But just to understand, gamblers view that Fury Usyk fight as a jump ball now. That's a new development. Well, let's talk about the black swan. It's really not a black swan. It's an elephant in the room. I believe that Philippe Ergovic gives Alexander Usyk a much tougher fight than would Tyson Fury. Can we say this in public? Right? I consider Philippe Ergovic to some extent to be an uncrowned champion. Right? Here's the kicker. I believe Tyson Fury does better against Ergovic than he would against Alexander Usyk. Let's just say, while I'll be disappointed if Fury doesn't fight Usyk, I'm excited about the possibility of some excuse coming from the Fury camp, right? Because Fury hasn't exactly been in a rush for this fight. He's taking his time in approaching this fight like Canelo is taking his time in fighting David Benavides, who's now talking about going to 175, right? Think about it. You have two heavy challenges to Canelo that would be certain box office blockbusters, right? You have Benavides, you have Terrence Crawford. And you mean to tell me that Canelo, who kept Golovkin waiting, I believe Canelo himself knows he was lucky to survive with a draw in the first fight and get an award for a win in the second fight against Golovkin. He kept Golovkin waiting for years, right? Because Canelo understood father time beats everyone eventually. Now, I've said here online that I thought Benavides looks weight drained of late at 168 and that eventually he's going to go to 175 Canelo seems to be waiting him out, right? I can just say here with a straight face, if Canelo's next opponent is the hitman Jamal Charlo, understand that's a huge step down from Terrence Crawford, right? Crawford is a technician's technician, right? Crawford is not in it to show up and run for 12 rounds from Canelo. Right? Physically, the men are around the same size. Canelo carries more weight. But understand, Crawford, in his own right, is a closer. Crawford was prepared to fight Errol Spence at 154. Right? Crawford is that fighter who 
doesn't have to weigh what you weigh to knock you out. Right? Let's just say, as slow-footed as Canelo has been in accepting a challenge from Benavides or Crawford, Tyson Fury seems to be as slow-footed in following through on his fight against Alexander Usyk. Right? I don't think Tyson Fury wants this fight. Truth be told, I believe Tyson Fury understands that this would be one of the toughest fights in his career. I believe he understands, too, that if the stars align and somebody else, let's say Ergovic, takes care of Usyk, Right, who I think would have a hard time with Gili Zhang. If somebody else takes care of Usyk, then just like Floyd Mayweather didn't have to fight Antonio Margarito, just like Ray Robinson didn't fight Charlie Burley, Tyson Fury wouldn't have to fight Alexander Usyk. Right? Pay close attention to what's happening here. Folks, the betting line not only has shifted for this Tyson Fury Usyk match, just understand this morning it's not even on oddschecker.com. Right? Let me just say, too, the film of the injury in training camp, wow, that looks a bit unusual, doesn't it? Right, Tyson Fury is deep in the pocket. He's leaning in on the uh, guy he's fighting. Uh, it seemed to me to be more risk than one would assume from one of the last sparring sessions before the originally scheduled date for the fight. Right? Understand, too, the mood with the Usyk crowd. This isn't a final payday type situation for them. Right? No, no, folks, the Usyk people want the fight. They're disappointed that the fight got delayed. Right? They want the fight. They feel that Tyson Fury's trying to avoid them. Just read the comments where they're openly questioning Tyson Fury's injury. We've seen the photos. We know he had a gash. Right, we understand the cut required stitches. Right, the question is, did Tyson Fury put himself in a position to get cut? Was Tyson Fury hoping to get cut? Well, just understand, there's a boogeyman in the room right now with the two fighters, and that's Philippe Ergovic. Right? Ergovic throws punches on a loop. He knows how to handle southpaws, folks. He beat Zhili Zhang. Let's revisit that Ergovic Zhili Zhang fight. Right? At the time, we looked at the fight. We thought this was some sanctioning body uh, ordering the fight. Understand, Zhili Zhang took the fight when several other fighters refused to fight Ergovic. Several others. Right, folks, I'm just telling you that just like how the Lennox lewis Vitaly klitschko fight, which wasn't supposed to happen, Lewis was supposed to fight Kirk Johnson, just like that fight is one of the biggest heavyweight fights of the last 30 years. I'm just telling you we might look back at that Philippe ergovic Zhili Zhang fight and wonder how it flew under the radar when it happened. Right? Both of those men are serious threats to the throne. Whoever is holding the belt. And just understand, if Tyson Fury, for whatever reason, backs out of his fight against Usyk, Usyk's not going to get a soft touch. He's going to be in against the guy who I've called the heir apparent here, 
for a long time, right? In the comment section of this YouTube video, you could tell us how long you believe I've been calling Philly Bergevic the heir apparent. Right, there's going to be a fight in there where you're going to notice a heavyweight treating Usyk, who is bigger than Sonny Liston, like a cruiserweight. Right, just food for thought. Right, something big is going to happen in the heavyweight division in May. Right, I also want people to figure out the Zhili Zhang Joseph Parker fight. Right? Just understand, that's a bigger fight than it seems as well. Right? If Zhili Zhang goes through Joe Joyce and Joseph Parker after giving Philippe Ergovic the toughest fight of his career, right? I'm just telling you. These heavyweight champs are going to run out of excuses as to why they're not fighting him. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you also in the comment section. If any of the odds that I've mentioned for the fights I've mentioned, Tim Zhu, Thurman, Wardley, Clark, Haney, Garcia, Lomachenko, Cambosis, if any of them jump out to you as betting opportunities, tell us about it in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.